Um, I am the director of campus culture and climate, which is a relatively new position within the office of the vice chancellor for diversity, equity, and inclusion. I won't go over what I do because it's, it's provided there. Um, but I've been with the university um, for a long time, um, both as an alum of the university um, and then returning to uh, the campus as, as an employer professional um, in 2003. So while I say that um, uh, I'm not, I didn't intend to be here for a long time, it's been almost 20 years. Um, so, um, and I've been doing diversity work for the majority of, of my career. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about me. <coughs> Um, and I'm Ross, I use he, him pronouns. I um, am also an alum from the University of Illinois and I've been working on campus for a, a, a longer time than Camellia, at least in a run, uh, um, but, um, but also for a long time. And I'm really excited about this topic because I know for me um, coming from a really um, racially homogenous community um, and uh, uh, though not a class homogenous community, to Champaign-Urbana, to kind of navigating different professional contexts. It's made me think a lot about this stuff that we call um, uh, work towards fairness or work towards equity or justice. And, um, and per personally, I know that I've had a lot of times when I've, um, I've put my foot in my mouth or I've um, done things that um, I didn't know how to Kind of make right um, once once they'd happened and um, and so I think that thinking about what my personal role is, um, I know for me is this this constant uh, piece that I'm revisiting is what are the things I don't know and what are the things that I am still learning and still um, coming to understand, um, which is why we're really glad to be here with you all at this like really um, uh, exciting moment working with your uh, your summer professional development series. Uh, so thanks for being here today. We're excited that you're able to join us today. Um, as Ross mentioned, uh, we enjoy having these conversations um, with the community. Um, we both enjoy uh, just just digging deep into you know into these issues, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, this work is very layered. It's very complex, and so. Um, we only have an hour or, or less at this point together, so we certainly um, won't be digging very deeply, you know, today, but we hope that uh, today provides an opportunity for, um, it, to give you some information, but for you all to have continued conversations um, around these issues and as they pertain to you and as they pertain to the organization um, that you're, with what you're affiliated, um, as well as the research park as a whole, um, as well as your future career, wherever you know, that, that is going to take you. Um, so we want to start off just by making sure that we're all on the same page. We use diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I mean, I mean, they're almost like buzzwords now. You know, we use them so freely and uh, routinely um, but we want to stop and take a moment to really talk about what does diversity, equity, and inclusion mean to try to put um, some meaning back into the terms that have um, become very commonplace um, within the work environment in particular, but within our society, you know, in general. So when we're talking about diversity, we're talking about all the various ways um, that we exist in a space. Um, we're talking about the different identities, you know, that we hold, um, the intersecting aspects of our identities, um, and so we don't come into any space as any one person. I don't show up as just an African American. I don't show up as just a female. I don't show up as just a mother and a spouse. Um, I show up with all of those um, different identities, plus many, many, many other identities. Um, and because of those identities, I, I, my lens um, and the way that I um, approach an issue or see a particular issue or talk about a um, particular topic might differ from the way that you see it, talk about it, approach it, because you have um, perhaps 
uh, uh, very different intersecting identities, or maybe even some similar, but but still different, you know, identities. Um, what diversity is not, and I know that the present the presenter last month talked about this um, a bit, is it's not tokenism. It's not let's identify one person with a disability or a couple people with a disability or you know identify the the one um, Asian or Asian American or the one queer individual within our space and say that we um, have diversity that's that's what it's not and and you know the presenter talked about the um, the 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 challenges in doing that you know how that impacts not only the person who is tokenized, but also um, other individuals, you know, within the space. And so it's an appreciation for all the different pieces of us that we bring um, into a space. And then when we talk about equity, and I want to uh, distinguish that, Ross, you can go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, I want to distinguish that from equality because oftentimes, you know, we'll, we'll talk about equality, which means treating everything and everyone the same, making sure that um, there's um, equal access or opportunities or, uh, you know, fairness across the board. While it is about fairness, it, that fairness um, is dependent on what individuals need. And so as someone who's been, um, a professional or in the work environment for 20 plus years, um, for someone who's very new to the work environment, we're going to need different things. Our professional development, even if we're in the same field, our professional development um, looks very different. Our mentoring looks very different. And so it's making sure that everyone within, uh, with, uh, that's uh, everyone who's on our team or within the work environment, has access to those resources, access to uh, the information that they need in order to succeed in the position for which they've been hired. Um, it's making sure that we're mindful um, of the barriers that might exist um, that keep um, our environments from, from achieving equity, whether that is uh, being flexible with, with hours, recognizing that um, some people have different commitments um, depending on, again, their, their respective identities. Um, it might mean um, even removing uh, physical barriers in, in some instances. It might mean um, looking at and, and adopting our policies to make sure that, again, that we're not um, treating certain groups of individuals or certain people within the organization differently or advantaging or disadvantaging um, some more than, than others. And so when we, we talk about equity, it's, it's being fair based on the needs of the individuals within our organization, not necessarily giving everyone the same kinds of resources and the same um, information because that um, may not be useful to them in, in terms of where they are and what their needs are. And then finally, um, inclusion. And I would, while all of these pieces are critically important to creating um, an inclusive work environment, it's, it's, this is really kind of the bow, um, you know, uh, and, and the gift, if you will, or the icing on, on the cake. Um, because while you can have diversity and while you can work to achieve equity, if you don't include that inclusion piece, um, then it's, it's, the, the diversity doesn't necessarily um, play out the way that you need it to play out. Um, it may, if you're, if you're not mindful of how you're being inclusive and how you're creating inclusive spaces, the diversity that you have um, you might find that those people are not staying. Um, you're not re retaining um, individuals who make up uh, the, the diversity or who make up a diverse work environment. Um, and so again, it's, it's, it's the, the equity piece, but also making sure that individuals are able to be who they are, that they're able to perform to the best of their abilities, that there aren't any uh, barriers that are in place 
um, that there aren't, um, uh, that the environment is not such that they feel as though um, they, they can't bring their authentic self, you know, to the work environment. And so, um, you know, we hear about all different types of, of microaggressions relative to, to race and to uh, disability and to um, gender and, and so forth. And um, when those kinds of things are, are part of the environment, then individuals feel like they can't be who they are uh, without being subjected, you know, to, to comments or, or, or certain behaviors or even missed opportunities um, as a result of, of trying to bring who they are into the space. It's making sure that everyone who's in the space um, feels valued. It feels as though they, um, that their voices are heard. So not only that they have the proverbial seat at the table, but that their voice is heard at the table, that their contributions are acknowledged um, you know, and taken into consideration. Um, and ultimately that they're, they're part of the organization and they're supposed to be part of the organization. And so I wanted to make sure that, you know, before kind of getting into the rest of the conversation today, that, that we all had some understanding of when we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, what are we talking about? And I'd love to hear, Ross, you can go ahead to the next slide. If you have um, different um, uh, definitions that you use in, in your space of diversity, equity, and inclusion, please feel free to you know, put those in the chat or on yourself. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we, we talk about, you know, again, diversity and the value of diversity. Um, but I want to get from you, for those of you who've had an opportunity to work with diverse teams, um, what are some of the challenges that you've observed and what are some of the benefits that you experienced um, working on diverse teams. And so take it just a, a, a minute or so and kind of think through those and then um, feel free to put your answers in the chat or unmute yourself um, to share um, what those challenges or, or benefits have been. I'll just jump in right quick. Right quick. Sure. Um, I think that having diverse teams just conditions or reprograms your thinking so that you're open to more perspectives. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, if that starts out with um, just being more exposed to, to more um, cultures or um, diverse teams, that it just allows you to be, op be more open minded in general, I think, subconsciously. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kathy. Others? say for our team too of just the benefit of those different perspectives and for our companies and their employees that um, the diversity improves the output of the innovation and that the, the end goal of what we're trying to produce the types of communities we're trying to build are improved because they have different thoughts and perspectives they serve different customers in many cases in new ways and so if we're only serving one note that isn't as holistic and it's not as good a business opportunity either so I think there are reasons to do it that are um, for the strength and health of your employees, but there's also um, to better serve your customers and to better improve the innovation and output of your company. Absolutely. Thanks, Laura. I think that one to... of the, I was just going to say a challenge is that making sure all voices are heard because everyone has a different uh, way of communicating. People have different comfort levels as to how they engage. And so uh, making sure that you're, um, you know, assessing in ways that are accessible for different types of people or mm -hmm. different ways of, you know, interacting is can be challenging. I think there's also a lot of benefits that can be stated from making, of course, sure all those voices are heard, which I think Laura stated. Absolutely. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. Um, so you all uh, hit the nail on the head, as, as they say. Uh, diversity can present its challenges, to be sure. I mean, you do have um, different perspectives. And inevitably, when there are different perspectives, um, it, can, it can seem initially like conflict if you're not ready um, for those different perspectives, or if 
Uh, this is this way of engaging and inviting um, individuals, you know, into the conversation is something that's a new practice uh, for your, your company or for your team. Um, and so it may initially come across as, you know, that we're, we're arguing or, you know, this person is not agreeing with anything that we're saying because they um, are just presenting a whole nother, you know, issue or a whole nother, or they're challenging, you know, what's been presented. But trying to reframe that and think about that conflict um, as, op as an opportunity, um, as an opportunity to think about the issue differently than, than what you had thought about it before. Um, think, you know, think about the way that you've done things differently than, than how you've done it before. As Laura mentioned, the outcome um, is tends to be in research, you know, supports, uh, continues to support um, that the, the outcomes are, are always better um, or almost always better. I don't know if I, I start, try to stay away from using always and never, um, but, but generally um, are better when you have those, those diverse perspectives. And so it's, it's um, being able to appreciate um, the different uh, uh, the different ways and the different approaches um, that different team members might have uh, to to an issue. Go ahead and move forward. So, so I do. So you've talked on uh, you. Some of you have talked about some of the benefits, and so I just want to kind of uh, reiterate some of those points and add to those. Um, there has been so much research that talks about the value of diversity to organizations. Um, as Laura mentioned, uh, organizations with uh, greater diversity perform, perform better, especially when that diversity is part of the leadership. Um, organizations, companies, and, and, um, and multiple studies that have been conducted, companies that have diversity, diversity at the leadership level um, tends to perform an average 15% better than those that are more homogenous or don't have diversity. Um, but that there's benefit to diversity at every level. Obviously, the goal is always to make sure that the diversity is represented throughout the organization. So it's not just in the entry level positions or the intern positions, but um, in the middle management and in, in the senior level positions as well, because that's when we really start to uh, realize the benefits of, of having those diverse um, voices and perspectives at the table. Um, I think Laura also mentioned this, um, understanding the needs of your customer better. Um, and we've seen, you know, this play out in real time, you know, in, in a number of uh, products that are, are being offered now that are the cater to uh, much more diverse communities than, than perhaps before. Um, I remember when Rihanna, I think that's who it is, when she first introduced her uh, cosmetic line, and because it it really met the needs of women of all shades, it just sold out. I mean, for a long time, um, it, the response to the product line was just tremendous um, because there had been very few uh, uh, cosmetic lines that um, that cater to the needs of different shades, different complexions, different skin types, you know, and so forth. And so, um, so we see that time and time and time again. Um, I think uh, Ross just mentioned when Ra Ralph Giles reformatted the the Chrysler 300. Yeah, it was it was huge. Um, I I don't I only know the surface level um, of that story, but. When when the new Chrysler 300 came out, the response to it was tremendous. And and if I'm correct, it was an African American uh, person, you know, who designed that. And um, and now you see, you know, Chrysler 300. Uh, and I don't have a I don't have statistics in terms of what the sales looked like before the redesign of that car and what it looked like after. But it was really a a showstopper, you know. Afterwards, I, I remember. Um, that being, you know, really big deal. Um, and so, so better understanding um, who is our customer and what are the needs of, of our customers um, 
and the entirety of, of our customers, not just a particular you know, segment. Um, uh, as mentioned, diverse teams are more creative, more innovative when you have um, individuals thinking in, in different ways, um, then you're, you're going to get um, a different type of product. I was uh, reading an article about a person who has a visual disability and uh, who works in, in science. And she was saying the way that she has to engage is very different, obviously, than those who have, um, who are, um, who are sighted. Um, and so uh, the way that she engages it, it uh, she's able to think differently about um, the, the material that they're working with. And as a result, the end product has been beyond uh, what their expectations were, just because of the way that you know she has to think differently as a result of her different abilities. Um, as we've talked about, you know, different perspectives certainly create more complex problem solving. Again, which take time, but but in the end, um, um, certainly are are more innovative, more creative. And then uh, Kathy mentioned that diversity enhances our cultural competencies. And um, again, research supports um, that we, when we have an opportunity to engage with individuals who come from different backgrounds, even the speaker, you know, last month talked about that coming from Texas, having moved to, I believe, New York um, and eating fruit, you know, in a certain way, which I can co-sign and I put salt on all my fruit. Um, but understanding, you know, those those different cultural nuances, um, if you're from this part of the country versus this part of the country, if you're from this country versus, you know, this country. Um, and even if you're just from, you, you grew up this way in comparison to someone, you know, growing up this way, um, being able to get a better understanding of um, what, uh, what the cultural pieces of, of those different identities are. Um, you know, I, I, I'm always saying there is absolutely such thing as Black culture. There are certain nuances that are particular and identifiable um, across the board by, by individuals who identify as, as African-Americans. Um, and, I'm, and I know that to be true, you know, across different cultures. And so I'm taking the time, you know, to create those opportunities to um, work alongside and collaborate with, with individuals who come from different backgrounds um, so that it, it doesn't enhance your cultural competency. Well, and I, I wanna add, uh, like, we also know that the flip side to be true, that in, when, um, when there aren't a variety of stakeholders and perspectives and, and folks at the table, that um, the, the end result is um, often not only um, kind of absent of the perspectives of, of individuals, but it, at times harmful too. Um, and I'm thinking particularly about the um, way that during COVID, we learned that the oximeter is designed for a certain skin tone. And so that um, folks of darker skin tones were not being measured their oxygen ratings accurately. And so um, we have a device that is supposed to monitor our health and monitor our, our oxygen level that is not able to monitor across all, um, all uh, skin tones. And so this is like clearly an oversight on the, the part of the folks developing this, these material, these, these uh, machines. And so I think that's just one example, more recent example of other things that we've seen of times when people's perspectives are either not taken into account or even like by not being uh, taken into account or not being considered, it actually further serves to marginalize or harm, harm communities, which is another reason why we're obligated to really consider how do we create the space for inclusion and equity. For sure, thank you, Russ. Um, and then uh, it's 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 a little bit of a chicken and egg, you know. The, the more diverse organizations are, the more um, likely that they are to attract more diverse talent. Um, when people uh, see people in the space who look like them, 
uh, it's, it's just, it's more of a, um, I, I know that there's someone within this organization, um, perhaps who I can relate to, who might have some of the same experiences and that just goes to our innate and group and outgroup biases, you know, that we have. Um, we have a tendency to gravitate towards people who look like us, um, who share our experiences. And so it's not at all um, 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 surprising that when, you know, someone sees that this organization has individuals who, are, who have various disabilities or uh, this organization have people who outwardly have certain um, religious identities um, or who have various gender identities. Um, it's, they're more individuals who identify in the same way are much more likely to um, uh, be open to being part of that organization. And the converse is true as well. If it, it seems like a very um, homogenous organization, then those organizations have uh, uh, have more difficulty attracting uh, diverse talent, um, and diversity normalizes diversity, right? You know, I, I think about TV shows, I think about commercials, um, products when I was growing up, and there wasn't a lot of diversity. Um, certainly, not any apparent diversity, not any racial diversity. Um, gender norms were very much. Uh, women are, uh, you know, if it's, a, if it's a house cleaning product, it's typically women who are advertising it. Um, if it's some sort of construction related, then it's men who are advertising it. Now we see, um, we see some of those stereotypes, you know, begin to um, be dispelled, you know, with, with the marketing, you know, that we see now. Um, I, it's rare that I see a commercial that does not have some racial diversity um, in the commercial. The amount of TV shows and movies and so forth, you know, that has um, uh, gender diversity, uh, sexual orientation diversity, it's it it's night and day from you know from when I I grew up and 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 people need to see that you know when Kamala Harris was was elected the response from women in particular and women of color um, um, in particular was just tremendous because to be able to see that I can attain this, um, you know, this status, it, it becomes more of a reality. Um, and, it, and it supports our, I think you lost, um, it supports our, um, our feeling of being included and, and being part of you know, our society. Growing up, my parents would never buy a doll that was not, um, that did not have brown skin because again, it's, we want these things to reflect who you are, not that you're always seeing something that does not reflect who you are. And then our climate is changing. Um, uh, organizations are much more um, politically active and um, much more um, um, ad advocate for diversity, much more than what we've seen, you know, in years past. Um, and then we certainly see a change in our demographics. Millennials um, identify diversity as one of their top priorities when they're deciding where to work. Diversity um, has become one of the things that they cite as as being uh, something that they're looking for within an organization. And then of course, um, the greater diversity, the less likely it is that individuals will um, not feel, again, tokenized, will not feel as though they're being excluded. Um, prior to moving into this position, I spent about a decade investigating complaints of discrimination and harassment um, filed with the university or against the university. And oftentimes those emanated from individuals just not feeling as though they were valued um, within their organization. And then as, as Ross mentioned, uh, when we have greater diversity, it, it provides us with an opportunity to be more attuned to, um, uh, to the needs of our customers and, and avoid marginalizing or other cultural mistakes. So I'll turn it over to Ross now to finish us up. 
Yeah, so um, I'm going to have us move into uh, breakout groups. And uh, Kathy, we might need your help with this. Um, we're going to put you into um, breakout groups of uh, three or so. So Kathy, if you could help us set up uh, breakout groups so that there's about three people in each group. Um, and what we'd like you to do, and I'm going to paste this into the chat. Um, um, is we're gonna I assign them. them um, can they just be assigned automatically or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. Oh, thanks, Camelia. Camelia already. Um, um, so in the chat, you'll see there are two questions. So um, uh, go ahead and go to your breakout rooms and we'll give you um, five or six minutes to chat about these questions. It was good to see some of your faces in the, in the group. Um, so what, um, what were some of the uh, practices that you all identified? What were some of the good things that, that you've seen um, that you appreciated? Um, I'd love to hear a couple of examples. We uh, talked a little bit about how we are, campus students are able to have a diverse intern staff because of the student body, but then it's harder to have that in full-time roles on campus. We kind of got cut off in the discussion, but that's what, our, that's what we were talking about at the end. Mm. Cool, yeah. The, the, um, and and um, in the group that I was in, we were talking about like, oh, it seems like it's really easy to have these kind of conversations, but how much of that is a sort of like campus bubble or a college student bubble? And what does that look like yeah. in other sort of professional settings? Yeah, we talked about the campus bubble too, <laughs> how it's different um, outside of campus. We love talking about issues on campus. <laughs> we do a lot of talking about it. Um, so yeah, so, so how does that, how does that differ? Yeah. Um, what, what about some of, the, uh, some of the interns? What were some of the things that you've seen yeah, it's definitely been nice working on like such a diverse intern team. That's something that I feel like we've really had a good handle on here. And just being able to interact and listen to so many different voices has been a really like personally fulfilling experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think a unique experience I've had in the theater department, uh, Camilla, and um, I think y'all actually, Ross, I think y'all actually came in to speak to stage managers yeah. earlier in the spring. Yeah. Uh, we have a really unique situation in that we regularly ask students to put themselves in stories um, to portray for others. And sometimes those topics are uncomfortable or um, address diverse voices. And it's important for us to understand those voices and make sure we're portraying them accurately in theater. Um, so as a department, we've definitely been focused on that and getting better at that and how to support diverse actors in the rehearsal room. Mm -hmm. um, because those are very sensitive uh, things sometimes. So, yeah. yeah. One of the things that I appreciate about the stage management group also, and I think this happens in a lot of our uh, professional fields and certainly in academic uh, kind of areas of study is that historically these places have not been diverse. They have not been inclusive of a variety of voices. And, um, and so there is a kind of movement afoot in a lot of spaces to sort of radically shift and, and uh, change how, um, what does it mean to be professional in light of thinking about um, uh, uh, equity and, and cultural uh, uh, kind of the spectrum of, of uh, cultural behaviors and norms and um, what does it look like to be, um, uh, to be a community um, and, um, and what does it look like to actually promote that inclusion? Yeah. I think also a unique challenge in theater is that we're all gig workers. So we go from one company to another within a few months. And a unique challenge in theater is how do you advance diversity in an organization that you're new to? Or how do you bring up diversity concerns uh, that happen in rehearsal to a supervisor that you've only been working for for a few weeks? I think those are unique challenges that gig workers have. Yeah. And what are those? Um, and I imagine, like thinking about the second question, I, um, how do you personally advance? I imagine that um, we've all had to come up with um, 
are, are, start, are navigating or starting to build our toolkit for what are the strategies that we use to um, raise concerns or issues, to be able to be heard, have those issues heard, to move um, concerns into kind of change or into right. sort of practice or policy difference. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that if you're in a gig, uh, you know, how does that happen in a much uh, kind of smaller uh, time frame? Um, right, yeah. You know, build five or 10 years of experience with each other. What, what, for other folks, what were your personal kind of things that you do to personally advance? Yeah, so, um, so we, we talked about like a couple of things, but I think the last thing I was saying was that um, in my own practice, I try to be, because I am half white and half Asian, so I'm not necessarily, um, um, I, I don't feel, I don't get a lot of hostility because of my race. Um, and so what I try to do at least would be to try to be as inclusive as possible and just not make a big deal about race in general and in the way that like makes people stick out. Like, right, like we're all on the same team and it helps being in a working environment and school environment because we're all here, we're all collaborators. And so, um, I don't know, that's just my perspective on it in that mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks, Mel. So, so thinking about what is our work and part of why we wanna talk about what's, your, what's our role is because, um, I, I don't know about you all, but sometimes I find myself in a place where I look to the sort of like highest place of leadership in an organization. I'm like, well, if that person just did this, then everything would change. Um, but really organizations are made up of a lot of different layers of, of um, kind of both formal leadership as well as informal leadership. And a lot of the ways that any of us um, act or interact, um, what we allow and don't allow shapes how organizations, that shapes the feel of organizations, shapes how much people can feel like they belong or they feel like they, that this is not a place for them. And so um, thinking about what's my role is a really important piece to consider as you think about, this isn't just other people's responsibility, this is all of our responsibility. And so what might I get to do? What might some, be some of my responsibilities? So we talked about encouraging, Camille was talking about that, um, that workforce is encouraging authenticity can be a really important piece. And authenticity means being able to bring your whole self to work. Now that doesn't mean that folks are obliged to share everything and anything about their lives in the space, that people still have the ability to be private and to have their own, um, their own private information and private uh, uh, experience uh, to themselves, but that, have, that folks shouldn't feel like they're not able to bring who they are in this space if they choose to. Um, and also creating that space for others to represent their identities in the workspace. You may have noticed I used uh, my pronouns at the beginning when I introduced myself. I taught a class and I didn't introduce myself using my pronouns and three quarters of the way through the class, a student um, uh, let us all know that they used um, uh, they them pronouns um, in, I realized and speaking with a student recognized that by me not modeling the use of pronouns in our introduction at the beginning, um, that I also didn't create a space for that student to choose if that was a moment when they wanted to let us know what pronouns they use. And, um, and so thinking about the ways that we can signal to others that, that, we, that we are open to and we can talk about a broad range of identities in any given space, thinking about ways we can be inclusive of uh, ability status or, um, or gender identity, like that example, or, um, or race or class or nationality. Um, ensuring that um, people's perspectives are included in discussions and decisions um, and engaging in perspective taking, really that practice of walking in someone else's shoes and constantly thinking about like, what might that person's experience be? Um, a friend of mine who does um, trauma-informed work for the um, training for medical providers likes to talk about instead of what's wrong with you, um, thinking about how did you get to this place? What brought you to this moment that you're in right now? And how can I use that to better understand what's going on? We also have an obligation to, um, to speak up and interrupt if there's something going on that's harming others. So interrupting microaggressions and other forms of bias that might be appearing, um, challenging cultural norms that might operate on a quote, default. 
um, which are often that's you know majority norms that are that are being ex expected, whether that be um, race or class or or heteronormative um, cultural norms that are expected to play out, um, and then thinking about the ways that we shape policies and practices. So. Um, you know, what are the uh, ways that the policies and practices in our space um, encourage or discourage the, the folks that might work there? Some of you all might be familiar with um, some of the research on um, language in job descriptions. Um, and there's this uh, really interesting um, uh, um, online kind of this place where you can plug in your job description and it will show you the ways in which your job description description may skew uh, more masculinist. So that using certain terms that actually tends to like on the average push women away from wanting to apply for those jobs because it signals that um, that it's either more intended to be a more masculine space that it's uh, not welcoming to women in, in various ways. And so there's certain ways that we can even think about what are the policies and practices where the ways we use language, how do we talk about who this place is for um, and then how can we change that? Um, also, we can actively work to readjust and reshape the, um, the ways that resources are allotted, um, the opportunities for collaboration, um, thinking about ways we can support one another and create supportive spaces. So um, how can we be, um, uh, you know, as allies? Sometimes we may find ourselves as someone who has inside knowledge or inside resources. So how can we help share those resources and share that, that um, power and knowledge? Um, and then also advocating for inclusive resources for ever, uh, that, that uh, everyone can use, like reflection rooms and spaces, lactation rooms, quiet spaces and just creating some space to be flexible, to figure out ways to um, work together. Now, there are lots of different resources. Um, I think that um, many of you all are, are connected to campus. And so some of these may be programs you've attended before, but each semester, each of these trainings happens across campus. Um, if you're interested in learning more about any of these, you can contact us or just Google them yourselves and you'll find out when they're offered on campus. Um, but these are great opportunities to increase your, um, your competency, increase your knowledge and your skills um, around these different areas of how to, um, how to support um, folks in a variety of areas and how to understand ways that, um, you know, maybe some of the particular ways that folks may be um, marginalized in our workplaces and our communities. Um, we have a little bit of time left, not a lot, but we have a little bit of time left. Um, I want to open it up if there are any questions um, for Camelia or I, um, and I can stop sharing for the moment so we can maybe see each other a little bit. Um, any, any questions, any uh, thoughts? Ross, is there still the five days for change program? I remember that from several, I'm back on campus after a pause, a brief pause. Welcome back. Um, yeah, and so for staff on campus, there's a program that's through student affairs called Five Days for Change, which is a week of um, nine to five, essentially, or it's a little bit shortened for virtually, but there's hopes to bring it back in person. Um, but nine to five, thinking about what is my role as in my um in my profession, professional uh, role that I'm in right now, um, what's my role or responsibility? So yeah, that five days for change is also um, an opportunity. I found it, thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to say in general that we are hoping to continue this dialogue on diversity, equity, and inclusion through the school year um, starting this fall. So if anyone has any topics of discussion, issues, concerns, things you'd like to, you know, for us to have um, presentations on more in depth, um, please reach out to Laura Blyle or I and, and let us know. We're certainly open to feedback. <laughs> Um, I was just typing that we're, we, uh, Camille and I are really excited about this. We're excited to keep the conversation going. Thanks, Laura. Um, and uh, in hope that you'll be able to join us. Uh, we'll still be part of Research Park throughout the fall and spring. Yeah, just in, and then in closing this out, um, we will be sharing a recording of this 
um, of today's program. Um, it'll be uploaded to the Research Parks YouTube channel. I know um, our director, Laura Frerichs, is wanting to share it with the site directors, um, the Research Parks leadership. So we'll get it cleaned up and that link will be posted. Um, and then um, also the slides, if you, Ross or Camila, if you could get those to me, I'd like to share those with today's program participants um, and or registrants. And um, let's see. If there are other resources, um, helpful links that you want for me to share with the group um, when I send that out to everyone, feel free to email those to me. And thank you so much for, for presenting today. I've been really excited about having this discussion and I hope it continues. I'm looking forward to continuing the conversations. As I mentioned, this is not a one hour conversation. And so um, we certainly look forward to continue to engage the community.